forewarn all the witnesses, if you don't know this yet, we are due to have a surprise building evacuation <laughs> at 3 o'clock. Nobody knows. It's a run out and not you, OK? Um, I hope you brought your coats, because you will be expected to evacuate the building as well. Um, I really don't know how much time all of this conversation will take place. That will make a big difference as to whether or not we actually come back in and reassemble after sure. they tell us we're back in the door. So that's just the, the heads up. Um, just by way of introductory purposes, I'm Joe Benning. I am the chair of this uh, committee from Caledonia County. We have Senator Mazza from Grand Isle and Senator Hooker from Rutland. We are waiting for Senator Ginny Lyons to show up. We're not going to wait with testimony, but when she comes in, you'll at least know who she is. We also have a fifth member who is not here today. That's John Rogers from Essex Orleans. So, Jim, if you'd like to begin, tell us who you are, please. You are on the record. Great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. So, I am Jim Levinsky. I'm the executive director at Lamoille Housing Partnership. We also live in, in Hardwick, so you are my, uh -huh. my senator. <laughs> oh. So, um, it's an up and coming town. <laughs> we are doing great. Very impressed to see Hardwick that. rocks. I'm a criminal defense attorney. We used to joke that most of our clients came from the town of Hardwick. <laughs> right? When I first moved to Hardwick, I would come to meetings that I were, and I'd introduce myself and say I'm from Hardwick, and then I would pause and wait until everybody finished their Hardwick jokes. <laughs> I've got a few I can tell you later. <laughs> well, welcome. Thank you so much. And thanks for having us here on, on, uh, on this day for housing. And, um, and I, I also want to thank you for your con continued support for affordable housing across the state and, and of course, Vermont Housing and Conservation Board and, and our important work um, for all this time. Uh, I also want to mention and, and commend you all for your support for the recent housing bond that we did and just give you a little bit of update for that. Um, I think it, it was $37 million that it ended up being um, and those efforts uh, leveraged an additional $198 million for affordable housing um, and creation of uh, 800 new homes for low and moderate income Vermonters um, in 24 towns across 11 counties of the state. Um, pretty good work. Um, and besides the new homes, the investment uh, will add significantly to the grand list in those towns and result in over $172 million in construction activity across the state, which is obviously incredibly important when we create jobs and, and get money out into the private sector. So about us, Lamoille Housing Partnership is one of many local nonprofit affordable housing developers who work with BHCB and others to build safe, decent, and affordable housing. Our work focuses in Lamoille County and Hardwick. We currently provide homes for individuals and families uh, in nearly 300 apartments, almost to 300. We also provide homes to seven businesses uh, in our portfolio. We have housing in Hardwick, Morrisville, Johnson, Jefferson, and Stowe. Our residents include seniors, working people, veterans, people with disabilities, and formerly homeless families and individuals. The need is real. In our area, the vacancy rate is hovers around 2%. Uh, at any given time. Because of the lack of housing, rents have gone up, uh, really gone up significantly, making more and more people become rent burdened. Um, by HUD's definition, housing should cost no more than 30% of someone's income or a family's household income. Uh, a recent study that we've done has that percentage as high as 50% for a growing percentage of area renters and homeowners alike. Rents have increased to the point even where some standard vouchers that are available uh, cannot cover the, the market rate rents. They're just too high. So to give you an example, uh, currently market rate, one bedroom rents in our area uh, start at 900 and go up to as much as $1,200. Two bedrooms start at 1100 and go up as high as 1350. Three bedrooms start at 2500. And they, in addition to that, have to pay, in most cases, heat and electricity. What on, area is this? On top of that. 
the Moyle County. The Moyle County. Really? Jeez. Yes. And some of it has to do with Stowe and the, the cost in Stowe. So a lot of people, if they can't afford rents in Stowe, they're moving out into uh, Morrisville area, and the rents are just going sky high. You ought to come to Cheney County. Oh, mm -hmm. my God. I, I just can't believe. Uh, I have one question for yeah, you. Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, I have a three-bedroom rental <laughs> that I'm renting out for $550. Good for you. Thank you for doing but that. The next time that lease is up, I'm <laughs> Why is it Chicken County? That's where I'm from. They're building every day hundreds of new apartments. Mm -hmm. The rent is right through the roof, and I don't know what affordable means because when they say affordable housing, I, I've yet to see one in Chittenden County. And yet, they're all being filled. The population is right. not growing, so why is there such a demand? And, and you know Chittenden County, how many people there are building mm -hmm. complexes. Every day there's there's one on North Avenue where they're gonna have like 400 apartments. Mm -hmm. But why is there such a demand with no population growth? Well, I can tell you in Lamoille County, Lamoille County's population is growing. There's um, Morrisville, if you look at Morrisville, there's, they have a really strong business community. They're, they're, people are coming in because they want jobs and there's jobs there to be had. Um, so they're recruiting people to come in and work and there's, supply and demand, right? So if you have more people and not enough housing. Well, I guess I'd have to ask some of them in the county because it, it's not working there. And it's, mm -hmm. when I hear affordable housing, it doesn't mean anything. Uh, it, it's crazy what they're charging, and yet they're filled. And right. yet there's no population growth in Chittenden County. And uh, I don't know, the housing market is high, high priced. And, I, and it's puzzled me when we say we support affordable housing, but it's not affordable. I don't know what affordable work well, I can is. Address I, that. I can address that piece for what we do, um, so to understand, I'm prepared to do that. So we're, we're looking at a new project, and our proposed rents will start at $600 for a studio, up to $1,100 for two bedrooms, and that will include heat and electricity. Well, see, that's, that's within the ballpark. Right. But you don't and that's, that and that's what, but that's what we do. And I can leave it to someone else. Um, oh, no, 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 I, no, I didn't know if you were representing. To talk about yeah, okay. Chittenden County. Sorry. But I know she can do that. Okay. But I can talk about where I work. Um, I can also tell you that in the past 12 months, um, we processed about 400 applications for housing to fill about 100 available units. Uh, which also speaks to the need. We have some subsidized senior properties. They have a standing waiting list of between 70 and 100 people waiting to get into those units. And um, that, that's a lot, of, a lot of people looking for housing. Um, we have businesses, again, that need housing for their workers. We have a lot of seniors who are looking to downsize. They're tired of filling the wood stove, um, taking care of the farm. They want to move into a village where they can where they can have access to services and walk and not have to have two cars and all the things that go along with living in the countryside. So recently, um, with our partners Housing Vermont, LHP completed renovations of 18 units of housing in Hardwick and three properties. It's now called True Divine Housing LP. These apartments were created nearly 30 years ago. Um, the South Main Street one was there was a fire in 1991 and a whole block burned down. I don't know if you remember that or not. Yep. Um, so that building was, was built at that time. So we've, we've rehabbed those now. And in addition to the low income housing tax credits, we received money from VHCB and from the housing bond that actually provided over 20% of the, the cost. And I just want to show you, yeah, these two boards. This is after pictures. But this, this is the, the building on Main Street that had burned down and was rebuilt, and we just kind of rebuilt it again. Um, it's, you can see it's really a beautiful building. We fixed the clock. <laughs> it tells the right time now. And this is a commercial space on the first floor. We also own this yellow building in the back with Housing Vermont. That's a partnership of ours. There's three, a restaurant and a bookstore and a retail space as well in, in this building. Is all of your um, retail space downstairs in the blue building built? Yes. Yes. Actually, the clip joining company, she's been in there for a long time, a well-established business. We're happy to have her there. 
and then the other two buildings were historic buildings in town. Um, this one used to be a tenement house for grant workers at one time. And then this one is was two buildings that were put together, two houses that were on this adjacent lots that were put together, I think back in 1998. Um, this one, you'll see a lot of historic detail. The porch was actually kind of falling down. It was in need of a lot of work. And so now we have pretty much 18 brand new apartments here for folks. They're, they're really nice apartments and well done. So I want to tell you about a little part of a story from one of our residents. Um, we had a ribbon cutting and she came and spoke to us. And I, I'm going to quote here what she sent me. Uh, last year at this time, I was panicking. I was scared I was going to lose my apartment. I was going through a divorce from a man that lied to me for several years and put our family under some crippling financial struggles that not only destroyed my credit, but jeopardized my housing since he left me responsible for all of the back rent that we had accumulated. I still had two babies that needed me, and since I was granted full custody, I knew that I needed to swallow my pride and ask for help, not only for me, but for my children, who never asked to be put in this situation. Memorial Housing Partnership worked with me to get all of the back rent paid in a manageable way. They set me up with services through the Vermont State Housing Authority that made it financially possible for me to be in a full to be a full-time mom with a full-time job. I was able to make a career move without worry and put money in my savings account, afford all my bills, and function on a day-to-day -day basis without having to wonder how I'm going to put dinner on the table. It was beautiful feeling, knowing that I could do it, I could take care of my family. These are the success stories that we strive for. And I wanted to tell you this because of that success story. I wish they could all be this successful, they're not, but we certainly try hard. And all of the work that you helped to support us, this is a result in, in many cases. So we're currently, that's, I know this young woman. We are currently in the process of developing a new project in Morrisville with our partners at Housing Vermont that will add 24 brand new units uh, to the area. This is new construction in the village where we are working closely with the municipality to develop parking in the area we're, and apply for a VCDP grant to support the project. Building in villages in towns adds to the long-term viability um, of the village, adding foot traffic and economic opportunities. It also prevents sprawls and allows us to take advantage of municipal services, including water and sewer and transportation. More importantly, in many cases, it allows our residents to live more affordably, being close to services, shopping, healthcare, transportation, and even recreational opportunities that they probably won't have access to living out in the countryside as so many people do. And they can do it all without driving if they don't want to. These add significantly to their overall well-being and quality of life um, in, their, in their lives. Yeah, so these are renderings. We, we haven't finished. Obviously, we haven't even started this project yet. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Kathy. So this is going to be 24 units. The renderings at the top, this is from up from the top of the hill of River Arts, looking down into the village, this will be our new building. The other rendering is from the bottom, looking up the street. If you're familiar with the Bijou Theater, it'd be down on that side and, and looking up. Um, this this dropping will have two walkouts in the lower level. Um, this is the will be the main entry, and there's an elevator, of course, up to the other levels. We're looking. Um, the unit mix is smaller units, studios, one bedrooms, and some two bedrooms. Um, all of our marketing and our housing needs study point to needs for smaller units for both seniors and young people trying to get into the, um, the workplace. And they need to be smaller and affordable. We have some amenities in here for folks. There's a laundry on site and a community room. It's actually up on the top floor. Um, it's kind of amazing views, by the way, uh, all around the, the basin in Morrisville and the mountains around it. Um, and this, this is a view 
a view from the front with the, the lobby and the, the entry. And as you can see, we worked hard to try and match some of the older buildings in town and, and keep it in character with the village. And this is right in the village, walkable to everything. 24. Yeah. So it's going to sell at 300. <laughs> how, much are they going to, how much are they going to rent for? Um, uh, the rents for the studio started just over $600, in, including heat and electricity. And then we hit this. So we'll be um, at a low and moderate income up to uh, market rate for a little bit higher income so that we can um, allow some workers, um, young professionals, for instance, to come in and rent and not be restricted by that. And those rents on the top will be around $1,100, again, including heat and electricity. So um, in addition to partnering with our friends at Housing Vermont and VHCB and VHFA and VCDP to do these projects, um, we also partner with, a lot of, partner with a lot of local agencies, um, ranging from community action and mental health to um, community gardens down at the Oxbow right down the street so people can, can rent a garden for $10 a year, $10 a season, and grow their own food if they want to. Uh, we have SASH services, um, you may or may not have heard of them. They help um, take care of our elderly residents or senior residents if they so choose. We work with the community, um, hosting what we have been calling housing summits. The goal is to bring landlords, service providers, and tenants together to learn more about uh, things like fair housing, and eviction, recovery housing, innovative solutions to um, solving barriers to building new housing and ways for um, people just to add housing in the, in the uh, region without having to do more than maybe renovate, renovate a garage. Um, we strive to build, as you see, high quality, uh, the most energy efficient, I think, and long lasting buildings that we can. We incorporate materials and methods that help to reduce maintenance costs and ongoing affordability issues. We also use new and innovative mechanical systems to not only last long and be energy efficient, uh, but to provide warmth, comfort, and ventilation for our residents' health and well-being. So in closing, I would urge you to please continue to support our work on behalf of so many Vermonters who live in your towns who need safe, decent, and affordable housing. Please continue to fully fund VHCB. And if the opportunity comes your way, uh, for another housing bond, please stand up for that. It was so incredibly great. We do fantastic work across the state. All our partners do. Um, and it's well worth your investment. It really is. Um, so I was going to tell you that, you know, Ice cream at two o'clock, but I think you might have missed it. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. I'd like to introduce my colleague Kathy Byer from Housing Vermont. I don't know if you have remarks, but you can, or if you have questions, please ask away. Thanks. Do you have a percentage of your new units that go to the uh, homeless? We do. We do. In this new building, we're going to set aside five units, and we will work with local service providers to come up with memorandums of understanding on how we're going to fill those units. We've also applied for some place-based vouchers, and we'll see how that works out. Hopefully, we'll get them. In. They are really critical to our work with people who are homeless. Just out of curiosity, what is the total cost per unit of the new Morris Filler unit? This new building is going to be around $300,000. 300, Total cost per unit per unit, yeah. And how many units are we, 24. 24. We talked about that a lot. Um, we're also looking at ways to keep our cost down, but I will say that um, that is in line with regional and national affordable housing cost. I would also point out to you that we we usually do the hardest places to develop <laughs> by far. Um, this is an, uh, actually a vacant lot that we're going to develop. It was a house that burned down in 1986, I believe, or um, early 2000, 2006. 
it's been vacant ever since. Um, nobody wanted to deal with it. So we were able to deal with this thanks to some zoning changes by the local community so we can actually fit this, fit this on that property in the village. Um, there's, a lot to what, there's a lot to what we do. Does it require ongoing, I'm going to call it subsidy because I just don't know the language, Obviously, there are property taxes associated with that building once it's right. built. The rent is going to be lower than I would guesstimate is capable of covering the basics. I don't know whether I'm miscalculating or not, but... For the taxes? You for the taxes? There is a um, formula that we use, provided by the state, by all of you, um, that we get a little bit of a savings, so some of our our taxes are based on the incomes and expenses that we have. And so we get a, we get a little bit of a break on Maintenance is high. That's what Maintenance is high. That's what happens after I was on the board of mine, Senior Housing in Colchester. After 15 years, you got roofs, you got siding, right. you got, boy, that, that kills you. Wow. Well, we begin by setting aside part of that $300, $300,000 a unit. When we finish, the, when we bring our project online, we fund reserves, operational reserves and, and maintenance reserves. And every five years, I think, we do a, a CNA, which is a capital needs assessment. So we assess what those needs are, and we use those reserves for continued maintenance needs to, to keep the project and the, yeah. the property really up to date. There probably isn't any coincidence that the fact that both Hardwick and Morrisville appear to be growing the fact that they're both smack dab on the Lamoille Valley Rail Trail, that's the oh, yeah. Well, we might have finished that little section in the middle of our heart. We're working on it. That's our discussion for tomorrow afternoon if you want to come back on this. All right. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. I'm going to turn it over to Kathy. Thank you. Kathy, welcome. Hi, thanks so much. I'm going to um, be brief um, because I'm coming back at the end to talk about a uh, uh, project in Colchester where SD Ireland is the master developer and we can t answer some of your questions oh, then about yeah, Chittenden County. Just, I, 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 have I, some, I haven't got an answer about Chittenden County. I have some answers yeah. for you. Thank you. I appreciate so, it. So I'm going to talk briefly about a project in downtown St. Johnsbury that benef has benefited from the HRB money and I want to be cognizant of our conservation friends since this is the housing and concert. Conservation Coalition Day, so I'm going to be brief to make sure you get some time as well. Um, I, I know uh, Senator Benning is familiar with what used to be called Depot Square in downtown St. Johnsbury. It is smack dab in the center of downtown St. Johnsbury. Before I get the other half of my criminal porn telephone. But I'm sure you did. I, I have some stories about some of the people who used to live there. Um, it was owned by the out-of-state owner. We finally got it, um, wrestled it out of the hands of an out-of-state owner. And it was some of the worst housing that I have walked into in the state of Vermont. Um, we have re relocated um, all the tenants who were there. The building is empty. And we have started a very large asbestos abatement project. There is asbestos in all the original plaster. It was a, um, it was a, ho it was a grand old hotel in its days. And so we have a $900,000 asbestos abatement project going on. There are 25 workers in the building. You never see them because they have to be under containment for asbestos abatement. And um, they are renting 11 um, motel rooms for weeks because this is going to take about three months before, before it's completed. Um, when it's done, it's going to be beautiful. I'm sorry I didn't bring a board. We can just pass around kind of an image. Uh, and as Jim was talking, um, it has 9,000 square feet of commercial space on the first floor. And that's really the hardest nut to crack in our downtown, right? Um, there's some, down, there's some empty space in downtown St. Johnsbury. And we are really fortunate, a local investor group that includes the hospital, um, the Kingdom Development Company, and actually for the first time I've ever um, done a project, an Opportunity Zone investor who had, who grew up in St. Johnsbury and then really is kind of an angel investor in the first floor space. So we are um, very grateful that the HRB funds are part of this building and I hope that when we have our ribbon cutting in July of 2021, you'll get an invite and you'll come, come see the uh, beautiful conclusion. As long as there's a trail right up. And the <laughs> rail trail yeah. is connected to downtown yes, St. Actually, John's. Yeah. If, if, yeah. you're, if you're actually into riding, 
you should know that if you get on the bike in Danville, to St. Johnsbury is all down. <laughs> okay. All downhill. That's where the money flows downhill. <laughs> Kat, do these um, the storefronts? Do you have commitments for rentals in those? Um, we are working on a commitment from the academy to rent quite a bit of the commercial space along Eastern Avenue. Okay. We do not have a commitment for what everybody called the Chinese restaurant space yeah. because it was a Chinese restaurant and did not look that appealing. Um, it's a little hard when the building looks like it looks right now right. to attract. So well, we keep, have another year and a half before it's done. I and keep getting interviewed about the difference between Littleton and St. Johnsbury and that building. The last time I drove through, there were 13 empty storefronts. That building is a good chunk of those. Right. And then I say, go across the river to Littleton and try to find an empty storefront. And it's um, just one of those things that we're kind of cornered in our corner of the state. Yeah. So I'm, I'm very happy to hear this building is getting ready. Right Any other questions, guys? Thank you very much for coming. Thanks. Good afternoon, uh, Chair Benning, members of the committee. Thanks very much for making time on your busy schedule to hear from us today as a subset of uh, the folks from around the state who are part of the Housing and Conservation Coalition that are in the building today. For the record, my name is Phil Huffman. I'm the Director of Government Relations and Policy for the Nature Conservancy here in Vermont. Uh, I'm here today really more as one of the co-chairs of the Housing and Conservation Coalition. Uh, I'm on the conservation side. There are two of us from each side of the coalition that helped to sort of organize the coalition's efforts. Uh, and uh, I think before I say anything more, I guess two important, one question and a point, I guess. Um, the question just from your comment and then I'm going to go to Senator uh, Benning. Would you like us to try to get through things by 3 o'clock? Uh, we can do it. We can try I, I have no prediction how long it's going to take 180 lawmakers <laughs> yeah, I, I can guess. <laughs> yeah, so okay, we'll try to be uh, efficient with our time. Um, and just to let you know, I take it you haven't had a chance to have a break and get some ice cream from the ice cream sundae. So uh, I sent out a flare. Uh, that's the reason why I was on my phone a minute ago. So I'm hoping that maybe there will be something coming here before we wrap up shortly. Um, no promises, but we can take it with us outside as we stand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that's more yeah. of a equalize our That's right, and it won't melt while you're out there. So, anyway, it's a real pleasure to have an opportunity uh, to be here today with you all. Thank you again. Uh, and I hope you've had a chance, uh, even prior to the testimony that you just heard, to get a feel for the breadth of uh, the turnout that we have here in the building today. I think it's somewhere between 150 and 200 people. Um, largely volunteers from community organizations in every corner of the state, in your districts and all the other ones, uh, who are here to help tell stories really about the impact of the UCD funding that you all have been important supporters of for a long time. So we thank you for that. Uh, and the coalition and the organizations working on both sides are helping to address some of the most pressing challenges you've been hearing about. Affordable housing, dealing with homelessness, uh, workforce housing uh, on the conservation side, water quality, climate resilience, uh, sustaining our working and natural landscapes for all the benefits that those provide, helping to bolster our communities in a whole host of different ways, economically, quality of life, all those sorts of things. Um, again, I want to thank you for your past support for the VHCD funding and for, in particular, the capital bill funding uh, that comes through your committee. That's been an important part of helping to close the gap a bit from the, the funding through pr uh, property transfer tax that's supposed to be the sole uh, source for VHCB. Uh, our ask um, of you and your colleagues uh, today and over the course of this session is to uh, close the gap from the statutory requirement of full funding of half of the annual revenues of the property transfer tax um, from where it is now. So get to full statutory funding. In FY21, that would be 20, $22.4 million. Um, we're currently level funded in the governor's budget from current year numbers, so a total of $15.4 million of PTT and also capital bill money. Um, so we got a big gap to close there. But the stories that you're hearing, I think, provide compelling evidence of the value of those investments. We need to, there is a, a big pipeline of demand on both sides um, of uh, the projects that come through VHCB. Uh, there's 
probably $50 million worth in total of projects between housing and conservation that are backlogged. We need to get to full funding to be able to support that. The treasurer backed that recommendation in her report last week. Uh, so that's the ask. I'm going to uh, wind down and just uh, get ready to hand it over to our folks from around the state. We have a great mix of projects. You've heard a few already, a couple more, um, but of the value of VHCV and investments. The projects we'll be talking about are ones that have been supported with capital bill money as well, so I wanted to try to tie that to a core focus of your work here. Um, coming up next will be Lynn Bondurant. Uh, who I'm so thankful and pleased to say as a colleague of mine uh, through the Nature Conservancy, Lynn has been on our board as a volunteer leader for years now and is our current board chair. She's from the town of Danby. She'll talk about a project that we've uh, completed down in uh, <coughs> Wyndham and Lindenary uh, through VHCB funding with capital dollars. Uh, we'll then hear from Mary Ellen Copeland from Dummerston about a project that uh, she's been a part of at the community level there with the Green Mountain Conservancy. And then, as Kathy alluded to, Robin Jeffers, who's with SD Ireland Construction, will be coming in. She's just wrapping up a meeting that I was coming from also with the so we were just in a meeting with the governor talking about all of this, so she'll uh, come up towards the end and Kathy will uh, help to sweep as well. So again, thank you. Before you step aside, please. Yeah, just one question. Yes, sir. The treasurer was supportive of, of funding. Where does she get the money? Uh, I will. She's well, telling us there's no bonded capacity. That's right. Yeah, I would defer to her to answer that question for I herself. Think we're but have to, I think we're four and a half billion dollars in the hole. Yes. And uh, it's nice to say I'm going to do that, but I want to know where she's going to get it. Okay. Yeah. Thank no, you. And, and just to um, appreciate your question, yeah. Senator, and, and we recognize that the state is facing a lot of pressing. Well, no, I'm just saying she, she so. said she supports it, but. It's easy to support it get that money. Get to figure out what yeah, it, it, This is probably a good place to let you know the, the bigger picture story. Our capital bill, our budget for the capital bill, totals $124 million. I am getting warning signs from the treasurer that we may be about $20 million less in the next capital budget cycle. We are literally responsible for all the brick and mortar in this state. And so you can see there's a sizable chunk of money we may not have available to us. It doesn't mean we can't support everything that you're asking for, but it would come at the expense of other things we are also currently trying to do. So as we get into that battle over who's higher on the priority list, et cetera, um, please don't take the impression that we are somehow purposefully shortchanging you where it at that desperation point level where we're trying to do the best we can for everybody we can. Before I ask a question, yep. No, I, I no. hear you. No, appreciate the constraints that you all are dealing with. So thank you. And I think it's hopefully you're hearing already and you'll hear more just of the, the way in which uh, <coughs> investments in VHCB, wherever the funding is coming from, on both sides of the... <laughs> 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 Sorry, the message got through. Yeah. Excellent. Well, as Phil said, my name is Lynn Bondurant, and I'm the, um, I live in Danby, which is in Rutland County. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Not everybody knows that, I don't think. Uh, and I don't mind if uh, people are eating while I'm speaking, so Sorry. I know. I'm hoping it, you're going to have a choice. It gives me great, it's a great pleasure, actually, just to, to, to see that. So thank you for um, having me here today to testify. Um, as Phil said, I currently serve as the board chair for the Vermont chapter of Nature Conservancy. Um, I volunteer my time for the Nature Conservancy because I really love the woods and waters of Vermont. And I really love the fact that we, the people of Vermont, can be so connected to nature. We can be so close to it. And I think it's valuable and important. And I deeply believe in the mission of the Nature Conservancy, which is to protect and, um, the, all the lands and waters on which we life, all life depends. Um, a little bit of history on the Nature Conservancy. It was founded, and I'm going to go really quick, I'm going to talk really quick because I want to make time for everybody else. Founded in 1951. Today there's 50 chapters, um, in, in every state there's a chapter, and we have chapters in 79 countries around the world. In Vermont, we're celebrating our 60th year, um, which is very exciting for us. Um, and over the course of those 60 years, we have conserved over 300,000 acres, um, including some of the most biologically rich landscapes. Um, and more than 1,200 miles of shoreline. 
Um, many of the lands that we've conserved are have been are currently held in, by public agencies. They're not all held by the Nature Conservancy anymore. But we do currently manage 56 natural areas, and these are all open to the public for various forms of public activity: skiing, hiking, fishing, birding, um, and other things. What inspires me most about the Nature Conservancy is the fact that our work is based in science. This is incredibly Im important because it informs our work on the ground, whatever we're doing for a project in terms of what we conserve or what we might be looking to repair or enhance in terms of water or other things, but it also informs our public policy. Um, this way we're trying to do the best we can for our wildlife as well as our people you know, in the state of Vermont. Um, so we're really trying to apply that science to face the challenge, to, to address the challenges facing our state, um, you know, which include um, climate change, water quality, flood vulnerability, that's a really important one, um, and the health and well-being of our rural communities. So I'm here today first to thank you for your past support for the Housing and Conservation Board and its partners that do the work of um, conserving uh, uh, valuable resources. And uh, second, I'm here to tell you about um, a new and really significant success story. Um, something I want to mention that uh, this is one of the so-called legacy projects that was funded last year um, uh, in fiscal year 20 when the Senate approved an additional $500,000 to the HCB. These dollars as well as the dollars from the water quality um, fund um, helped, made it possible to purchase 3,500 acres of land in Glebe Mountain in the towns of Londonderry and Wyndham. Uh, this project has some history. TNC has known since the 1990s that this property was immensely important. Um, it was identified back then, a long time ago now, as one of the properties that, um, one, one, of the, one of the opportunities that still existed to conserve large tracts of property, um, large intact blocks of forest land. Uh, and there were a lot of conversations with that landowner over the years. Um, and. Uh, but it's only recently come about that the landowner, that there was an opportunity to purchase the land. And, um, but since then, the science has actually evolved. And we now know that not only is it important to Southern Vermont as a single intact, intact piece of forest land, it's also a really high priority for the entire northeastern US because um, it's part of a resilient and connect, connect, connected network of lands that will allow wildlife to move and adapt as we have climate change. And this is incredibly important. Um, so this property was really important, and the fact that we were um, had the opportunity to purchase it, and that when that opportunity arose, that the money was there and could be acted on was immensely important. So thanks to the Senate and VHCB and the fact that we were able to act and purchase that property, we now have safeguarded a huge um, 3,500 acres of rich area of wildlife habitat. It includes one of the um, richest um, beach stands in southern Vermont, and that's very important to our black bears, as many of you know, I'm sure. Um, it also protects a number of bird species that are listed on the Vermont Fish and Wildlife um, list of um, greatest conservation need. And if anybody's birders, it includes wood thrushes and warblers and various other things. Um, in fact, 95% of the lands that were conserved in Glebe are on the, they, 95% of them contain state significant natural areas. So this is a really important piece of property. Um, the property also, you know, yes, we, we've conserved the property, but it also brings a lot of benefits to the people in that region of Vermont. Um, first of all, it really helps with water quality issues, and um, that's really significant. Um, on this property are the headwaters of the Cobb, um, Brook and the Cobb Brook watershed flows in, over Hamilton Falls, Falls at Jamaica State Park and on into the West River. Um, so conserving the, that um, the, those headwaters helps protect the water quality for all those people living downstream. TNC is also undertaking watershed restoration projects there um, because of past management on the property. There's been some erosion, sedimentation, things like that, and so we'll be working to replace culverts. Also felling timber, wood to put in the streams, to slow the streams down, um, really protecting from flooding um, downstream. Um, um, sorry. <laughs> 
Yes, please, if anybody wants that ice cream. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to have a seat. Yeah, get it yeah. 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 before I'm done. Yeah. So the, the gleam acquisition um, is also really important because of flooding. And I want to talk for just a minute about flooding, because, you know, Londonbury is very prone to flood, flooding. You know, during all the big events, they've had problems. Um, and so when we change the course of the rivers and slow those courses down, help them become natural, healthy ecosystems, we're reducing the impact of flooding down the river, which saves communities huge costs. I know I chair my um, select board in my little town of Danby, and uh, last year our taxes went up 4.6% um, because we had to you know, make, damage, make, make repairs because of flood damage. We had lost a major, uh, actually not a major bridge, a large bridge that served a very small portion of the town, but it has cost us a small fortune. Um, so these things are very important uh, to the people in those regions. Um, the other thing about this acquisition is that it's helped to counter the recent trend of um, you know, people not being able to get on public lands. These 3,500 acres for 20 years had been posted and had been used as a private hunting preserve. And it is now once again open to the people of Vermont so that Vermont can get, so Vermonters can get closer to nature. Um, the other final thing that you know, this does is that you know, all this uh, uh, forest land allows us to pull carbon out of the air and store carbon and help us to start to you know, be part of that in addressing climate change. Probably not surprisingly to you, the people in that area have been wildly supportive of this project. Uh, the land's protected and they have access to it again, so they're, they're very pleased. Um, and they've been very helpful with seeing the whole project come to fruition. Um, all the benefits um, for Vermont nature, which will last in perpetuity, that come from these properties are made possible by this funding. And TNC received a $750,000 grant from VHCB. And this money was really critical to closing the gap. The whole project's cost us $4 million. Um, so that translates to a $1 of state monies for $4 of other funding, funding raised. And I think that's a pretty good return on your investment. And that's not even taking into cost the savings um, from things like flood events and things like that that won't happen in the future that are going to save those communities money. So I think this is money well, well invested. And after years waiting for the opportunity to purchase Cleve Mountain, um, it came suddenly, like fast and furious. Um, nobody expected it, just suddenly there was that opportunity. It was sort of a now or never moment. And this isn't the last critically important um, property in Vermont. And there's others, when, they, they, when the opportunities arrive, we're going to have to strike when we can. So I think it's really essential that we have a reliable source of state fundings to be able to use for these projects. So. In closing, I uh, also urge and would 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 lo like to see, love to see, if possible, uh, full support um, and full funding for the Vermont Housing and Conservation Trust in accordance with the statute, because I believe that this money helps with a, a lot of issues in the economy of our of our communities. So all Wyndham County. Wyndham County. <laughs> Wait, so it's the towns of Wyndham and Londonderry where this is is located. It's a, so we've saved all the banana trees. <laughs> the banana belt, absolutely. Yeah, it's a kingdom resident. We consider it. I know. That's right. It's the banana belt. That's true. That's true. Okay. Does anybody questions have any questions? Nope. No, thank you. Thank you for coming. Hi. I'm Mary Ellen Colton, and I'm with the Green Mountain Conservancy, and we're working on the Deer Run Nature Preserve. And you have the, uh, my, my PowerPoint presentation right there, and you can go through it yourselves. And so we don't need to go through that. So I just want to show you uh, what what we're doing. Tell you tell you what happened um, in 2018. Uh, we were told by the landowner of this parcel uh, that he needed to divest from it. It's a generational thing. It was left to him and his brother. They needed to do something with it. People in this area had used this piece for recreation for a long time. Um, we got together a small group of people and started talking about it. We began meeting with Joan Weir and decided that there was so much community support for uh, conserving this parcel that um, we, we needed to proceed with it. And so um, we did all the groundwork. Uh, in 2018, in December, we had a public meeting, uh, which was attended by 40 people, and you can watch the video of that meeting online that tells all about it. We had um, Raj Haydock, 
Roger's there, uh, speaking about geology, and Roger uh, has built a trail on this property, which I'll talk a little bit more about in a minute. Um, but um, so from there, we made it determined that the interest was there in the community. We went to town meeting, and town meeting in Dummerston unanimously um, supported this project. Uh, amazing thing, because with 250 people, and usually I don't get along that well. And so, so, but they did that day. And um, so we went to VHCB, and VHCB gave us $150,000 uh, toward the purchase of this. And we raised about $50,000 from the Dummerston community, which is a huge amount of money for a little rural Vermont town. And so we ended up uh, purchasing it in December 1st, this past December. And But the landowner said that in the meantime, we could build a, a trail. And so Roger took that on as a project and built in this trail, which you see winding here, um, is a low gradient trail, which means that all of us can walk on it. It's like, this is, this is the end of the Putney Mountain Ridge, and so it would be accessible to people like me because you'd be climbing straight up and we're done with that. So, but I walk on this trail a lot, and it takes you up to a monument, a high point, a weird, um, some kind of a stone structure up there that we don't know what it is, and we're trying to figure out. We've talked to the state. That's the one. Pardon? I've heard about that. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's a strange thing. Mm -hmm. I guess there's a few American Stonehenge type of thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so as we were doing all this work and getting all this phenomenal support and having community meetings, um, and people were just saying, this is a gorgeous place. I wanted one comment about Roger. and uh, He's told me that when he builds these trails, he goes from beauty spot to beauty spot. And that's it. You go along there, and you just come to another waterfall, or another stone wall, or another huge tree, or another deer yard, or what he calls a, a cathedral, a hemlock cathedral. And so. Um, as we were doing this, these two landowners became really interested. One of those is my property, that's why. And, and so we are in the process of conserving these two pieces. Well, one is Sam's, actually. <laughs> so we're conserving these, this 150 acres with the Vermont Land Trust. So it's gotten bigger. There's a wilderness school on Sam's property that uses the property. Uh, there's people using it all the time already. We just, the influx of people has been amazing. We're working on this one, and then we find out that the owner of this parcel, which is contiguous, has died, and his family wants to get rid of it. They, they're not into, into having all this land. 646 amazing, amazing acres on the ridge, um, and um, there have been more than um, 70 species of birds. This is a, a power line, and that shrub habitat, along with all of this deep forest, um, is is home to pet ornithologists have gone up there and um, have found uh, between 60 and 70 species. Some of them are species in greatest need of conservation. Um, this is has 2.5 miles of frontage on the West River. And you've already heard about the West River. We've heard about it several times today. Oh, there's many projects. This river is stressed because somebody convinced somebody years ago to put a couple of big dams up there to protect the floodplains in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. I don't know what we were thinking, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and so that stresses it, the, 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 the water's being impounded, it gets warm, and then they release it, and it affects all of the, the, the life along the river. Yep. And so we're, um, we're doing all we can to protect that. We've been talking to Marie Caduto at the Agency of Natural Resources. Uh, she really wants this to happen. There's 45 acres here of field that flood, protects against floods and, and more acres of, of floodplain there. Um, there's uh, really interesting geological features from the glaciers and from flooding events on that piece. So we have submitted another application to the HCB to get, to get this piece, and that's going to be a, a big, uh, big nature preserve um, and um, I guess I would ask you to any any questions. The community support for this is, is incredible. We have just been overwhelmed with the community support. How long is the trail? 2.2 miles to climb about a thousand feet. So it's around a nine percent average grade and that's a comfortable grade. 
The guy, the guy that has a YouTube site called Green Mountain Metal Detector. Huh. Oh. And I, I've always wondered where he's marching and getting some things from the Revolutionary War period, and I'm wondering if this is the area that he's marching in. Huh. Not take it you guys don't know anything. We haven't met him. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, this is funny. <laughs> But if you go up the, just one more thing, where we, the, the train starts right here, you go up here and you go up here, and as the summer begins and it's, as it gets more into the summer, the indigo buntings up there start singing and it's the most idyllic thing. There's a couple of big logs and I just go up there and sit and it's just the music. It's, you can't find any better music anymore. I want to get the Robin, so we only got a couple of minutes left. Yeah, I heard voices yeah, in the yeah, hall. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yes, Robin, while you're coming up, I want to go back to Lynn. Um, Lynn, the pictures that you handed out? Yes. I don't think either Senator Clarkson or McCormick live in that particular district. Did they pay you to have the pictures in? <laughs> I'll never tell. We take points away for that kind of thing. They no, they, they do. They're, they're, it's in the district. <laughs> so, okay. We had a chance to get up with them. Yeah, we Five of them. Yeah. Robin, welcome. You're going to be. Um, Thank you. Uh, so to I the can't see the hear. clock behind me, so. Well, you're going to hear whatever. I'll the hear the buzzers go off. Robin has a large we'll have the largest on anybody in Chittenden County, right here in Colchester. Yes. Large, large, so beautiful. Uh, largest, um, I'm going to step to the side a little bit. Thank you. I'm Robin Jefferson, but, oh. and I'm going to talk fast. If I'm talking too fast, let me know. <laughs> I'm Robin Jefferson with SD Ireland Construction. Um, we're the developers of. Severance Corners, which is the growth center up in Colchester. It's at the intersection of Blakely, Severance, and Route 7 and 2. Um, if you're not familiar with it, it's about a mile north of Costco, because most people know where Costco is. Um, how far from Maz's store? Is how far from Maz's store? About 2.1 miles. Oh. <laughs> just just about. Right just about. <laughs> just a bike ride down towards the bay. We have a detour. That's what we're doing here. <laughs> for, we we're working on that. This is the short cut. She goes for lunch, right? <laughs> <laughs> and breakfast, uh -huh. uh, and the cocktail afterward. Exactly. But anyway, uh, this is the southwest quadrant, and it's currently about three quarters developed. Most of what you see here is already in existence. There's 12 businesses, there's 285 residences, um, 60 of those are owned, the rest are rented. And uh, it's been very, very successful. Um, we have a restaurant, we have a hair salon, we have daycares, there's after school programs, dance programs, uh, a lot of things that are right here that for the residents. And a lot of the residents work in these businesses that are here. Um, five or six in town employees live here. So it's really be started to become, a, to become what it was intended to be. It's a beautiful hub beautiful, yeah. in yeah. the town. And so Route 7 is right here. I'm just going to flip this around. And this is the southeast quadrant. And this is where we are um, began construction about three or four months ago. And very similar idea. Um, commercial buildings in the front and then residences towards the back. And um, we're very, very fortunate and super excited. This building right here, uh, which is right next to a playground, and this is Sunny Hollow Woods, a natural area, which is full of beautiful trails. Uh, we just received the BHCB, I always screw it up, um, award to collaborate on that and partner with CHT in Vermont Housing for Housing. And the exciting thing about that is that with all the housing that we have up here, um, which will easily double what we've done on the Southwest Quadrant, is that we hit workforce housing with, with what we're able to develop ourselves. And so we can hit that median price, we can hit above, we can hit about 90% of the median price housing. But people frequently call us or they'll apply for an apartment and they're just under that. And they don't qualify for the apartment that we have. And they want to live here so badly because it's such a wonderful place to live with schools. And it's heartbreaking to have to tell someone that they don't qualify financially for an apartment. So we are, I'm turning red, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm very passionate about this. Um, we're really excited to have this partnership and for this project to have received the funding because now people of all incomes are going to be able to live here. 
Where was the cir circle going to go right through there at one time, right? The, yes, this is the circle ends right here. And this is from seven yeah, right that's, here. That's the circle going to go through. So the circle all funds are going to pay for the intersection improvements here at Route 7. Yeah. And two, it's currently a failing intersection, unfortunately, but yeah. they, it's yeah. going to get fixed. It's going to get fixed, yeah. Um, wonderful pedestrian um, improvements. So there'll be interconnectedness. It'll be safe for people to go back and forth. So you could live over there and work over here and vice versa. So we're really excited about the uh, growth center. See and all your equipment over there now starting a new project. We do. Yeah. The, um, they're working on this road here and this road here because this will be our first building here. The one which has received the funding. And how many units, housing units, do you anticipate? We have currently 285 over here, mm -hmm. and we are expecting to have probably have at least another hundred, um, and we're hoping to mirror that on the other side. Robin, how are they all being rented? Seriously, in Chittenden County, that's a question I had asked a little earlier. Yeah, how are they there's all a demand, being rented? There's a demand, and yet oh the my population isn't growing. Where are they coming from? Phone is ringing off. I, I know. I, I just haven't got the answer. Look at their building. There's a lot of people are moving into Chittenden County from the outer areas. Mm -hmm. A lot of people used to commute really far to work, and they don't want to anymore. They want to live close so to where they work. So there is a new population work. coming in. I, I, there's a new population in from outside of Vermont, but there's also, I mean, when the university is hiring, this is where people want to live. Yeah. Um, we're at that median rent level. Um, a lot of Burlington is above that, especially if you're coming here and you want to live in, in new housing and not old housing. You're going to come to these new developments. And some of them are the renters who are moving because they know they can have a more... Yeah, but they got stable. somebody else going to rent theirs where they're leaving. Yeah, I know, but they're, they're, they're new. But we even have people selling selling houses and they want to downsize yeah. and they want to move here and they want to be close to the medical center. They want to be close to the lake. They want to be... They don't want to spend their time commuting anymore. Right. If I could just add it's one thing from our perspective road. working in um, Chittenden County is that one thing people don't realize is there's no communities being built. After the financial crisis, the banks became much more strict about construction lending for condominiums. So you, the number of rental units going up would have been condos. And uh, now they're rental. They're rental I mean, it's the farms down below me are just putting in 150 houses right there. I mean, 150 on, 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 on oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. 